Good morning, my friends. It's good to have you joining me here this morning for our Safer at Home Sanctuary Worship Service at Mantwish Waters Church. A few notes. First, for the safety of the congregation, we'll continue the Safer at Home virtual format until further notice. Uh, go to the website at mwcpc.org for updates, information, and upcoming activities. Second, DVDs of the service are available through the church office, either through the phone number or the email uh, to my left. Um, third, links to hymns, songs, and other artistic interludes are included in the adjacent window as well. Um, and uh, this is the process you go through to, um, to uh, enjoy them in your worship service. First of all, you pause the regular service when you're instructed to do so by me. Um, second, if you're using full screen, reduce the window. Third, choose the appropriate song for that particular uh, part of the service. Uh, play the song, or open full screen if it didn't already, and bypass, skip the ads if they pop up. Um, play the song, sing along with it if it's appropriate. When it's done, close down the link and the piece and go back to the regular service, um, expand to full screen once again, and resume playing the service. That's it. Facebook and YouTube, it looks a little bit different, but the process is about the same. And sometimes because of our slow internet, things lag a little bit, or you may be overloading the bandwidth of your service. Um, some members found it helpful also to have two, two devices, one for the music and one for the main service. Um, fourth, I've begun experimenting with Zoom youth group confirmation meetings on Wednesday afternoons. Contact the church through the email or the phone if you or your seventh or eighth grader may be interested. Um, fifth, I'm also offering a Zoom Bible study to those who may be interested. Likewise, please contact us uh, to join that new ministry. Uh, that's the phone number and that is the email address. Sixth, we're integrating some local live pre-recorded music into the worship service recordings. If you'd like to have a piece of your music presented here in the sanctuary for recording, we'll, we'll include it in the, um, in the weekly worship service. Please contact the church again at the phone number or the email uh, to my left. Um, finally, the, as those of you know who've been joining us over the past few months, I've arranged portions of the service to be responsive readings. I'll read the teal and the white colored fonts and I'll join you in the yellow fonts as we read together. Prepare for worship. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what are humans that you are mindful of us? Who are we that you care for us? You have made us a little lower than the angels and crowned us with glory and honor. You made us rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under our feet. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. May we now all rejoice in our God. And across time and space we join together to sing our praise. Would you please pause the service at this point, link to song number one, and then return afterwards. Thank you. Calling all kids, calling all those young in heart, mind, body, and spirit. Welcome all. Um, good morning, kids. I hope you had a great week. Hey, kids, I tell you about God every week, right? Well, who are some of the other people that tell you about God? Who, who are some of those other people? Do, do, do you have Sunday school teachers that have told you about God? Uh, how about your mother? Has she ever told you something about God? Or has she ever shown you something about God? And how about your dad? Has, has your dad ever told you anything about God? How about songs? Do songs ever teach you something about God? And, and how about books? And, and the Bible, does the Bible tell us about God? Of course the Bible tells us about God, doesn't it? 
Yeah, have you ever had a picture or a plaque that had some Bible verse on it? I had one that said, uh, behold, I make all things new, and it had a butterfly on it. it that, that told me something about God, too. And I also got this little plaque called the Teen Commandments. This isn't the exact one that I had, but it was kind of like this. It has things like, don't let your parents down, they brought you up. Stop and think, and you won't drink, and be smart and obey. You'll give the orders one day, kind of like that. But that was a plaque that I had. Um, how about the world around us, the whole world? D does nature ever teach us about God? Does nature teach us about God? Well, when you look at these pictures here, do they tell us something about God? Pretty picture, isn't it? How about the animals? How about the animals around us? Do they tell us about God? Something about God? Something about their beauty and elegance and just, just how marvelous sometimes they are? And how about the plants? The leaves, have a lot of them have come down now, but a week or so ago, weren't they all gorgeous? Does that say something about God? How about the skies up above us? Do, do the skies tell us anything about God? Or, or the seas, the oceans down beneath us? Nothing out there proves there, there is a God. But, but if we open ourselves up to it, we can see the ways in, in which many of the people and things around us can show us and tell us about God. Much of the world around us can give us a glimpse of the beauty and the order of the, of the world. And that draws our attention to, to the possibility that, that God's work is there in it all. And as believers, that's what we believe, that God's involved in it all. When we believe in God, everything around us begins to help us see God more clearly. So next time you see something really pretty, really beautiful, just think for a minute about the wonderful God who is behind it all. And think about the wonderful God who, who has made you and, and how much God loves you. It, it, he loves you just the way you are. How much God loves you just the way you are. Think about that. God knows you're not perfect. None of us are. And God knows that in this life, you'll never be perfect, no matter how old you get. But, but God loves you just how you are. God loves you everywhere from the top of your head down to the tips of your toes. And he loves everything in between, too. And in some special ways, even you are telling other people about the God who loves you. You, you, the things that you say, the people that you love, the things that you do, all of that tells the world around you about the God who loves you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the wonderful world around us, for the beauty that's there and for the movement of nature. Thank you for the people who, who have played show and tell with us in real life, by showing us and telling us about Jesus' love for us. Help us to show that love to those around us and help us to praise you, not only with our mouths, but with the whole way we act all day long. We praise you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for our time together. Fill us now with your joy and your wonder. Help us to see a bit of you in everything and in everyone. Thank you for showing us and telling us about your love. Fill us with that love and goodness. Help us to love you and love one another and live the kind of lives you want us to live. And send the wind of your Holy Spirit to drive away all our fears and to dry up all of our tears. And help us to praise you. Praise you with everything in us as we all...
stomp our feet really loudly and say, Amen. Okay, kids, time to pause the service. Link to the music piece number two. It's, it's usually a, a kind of a catchy little child's uh, uh, service, or song. And, and enjoy it and then come back to the service afterwards. Thank you. This morning's reading is from the book of the Psalms. Psalm 19, verses 1 through 11. And then we'll tag on the, the next few verses as part of our prayer of confession. May Christ, the word of God, speak to us through the sacred scriptures. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the vast universe proclaims the work of God's hands. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, God has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and like the strong runner runs the course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them and and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The teachings of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The rules of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The awe of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, and even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. What's more is that by them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. You please continue the psalm with me as a prayer of confession. But who can detect their errors? Clear me, Lord Christ, from my hidden faults. Keep me also from arrogant sins. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great wrongdoing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Forgive us, O God, from what we have done, unpleasing to you. Forgive us also, O God, for the things we ought to have done but did not do. For the sake of your of this of your sacrifice, Jesus Christ, forgive us, so that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways all the days of our lives and enter into the full joy of your kingdom. When, when this earthly life is over and the fullness of our eternal life begins. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we are called to repent and to believe the gospel In doing both, turning from what is wrong and turning toward the one who is right, we receive forgiveness in Jesus' name. In his name, we are forgiven. And so, in Jesus' name, I proclaim to you, we are forgiven. Lord God, we quiet ourselves in the goodness of this new day. Lift from us our restless concerns, anxieties, and fears. We now breathe in your quiet. We say to our souls, be peaceful. Lift from us our restless concerns, anxieties, and fears. We settle back into your rest. We make still our hearts. We are so tired, so tired of running. And so we release the tension of the weak and breathe in your goodness. We exhale. We release the the weight of the weak. 
and we pause the plans clamoring for our attention. We quietly set them aside and we place them all in your care as we simply rest before you. As we enter into this time of prayer, O God, we offer our gratitude that you are always present to us and still in us a desire to listen to others. Help us listen with open hearts and open minds that people might feel safe in in our presence. Instill in us a spirit of serenity that others might feel accepted in in your non-judgmental grace. Free us from the tendency to label people and ideas and, and allow us instead to lean into mercy and kindness. In the stillness of these moments, we acknowledge the times when we've been less than kind, merciful, and open. Thank you for never banning us from your presence, loving God. Help us to love and accept others in the same way. Lord, reach out and connect us even when the virus seeks to push us apart. Help awaken us with your will for our, help awaken us to your will for our lives in each passing moment, and enable us to say yes to the good you would have for us. We bring before you the care providers of our world, asking you to guide, strengthen, and protect them in their care for the needy, sick, afflicted, and under-resourced people of our world. We bring before you all those in positions of authority over others, asking you to endow them them with love and strength, patience and mercy, wisdom and understanding. Lord, we bring ourselves, all that we have been, all that we are, all that we hope to be, asking you to shape and reshape us into the image of the one who leads us into the paths of service to others. Open our minds to the direction of your Holy Spirit, Fill us with the mind of Christ. Purge from us convictions, attitudes, and actions which are false, mistaken, and destructive. In our silence now, O God, we place ourselves in your hands. Guide us, O God, in our extended silent prayer. Thank you for the hush of the morning, O God. And all of God's people said together, Lord, hear our prayers. Let us join together now in the ecumenical prayer and pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be given to you. For with the same measure you give, it will be measured back to you. Thank you for your generosity in supporting us in our ministries. Thank you for your encouragement to reach out to need the needs of our hurting community. Thank you for your willingness to offer yourselves in new venues of ministry and service. Please let us know of specific needs of which you're aware, particular ways perhaps you would like to serve, 
and possible visions of both our ministries in, in both the present and, and the future. As you are able, please continue your support and, and give generously. There are two ways for you to give, through the mail at Mantwish Waters Community Church, Post Office Box 69, Mantwish Waters, Wisconsin, or the, you can give electronically through our website at mwcpc.org. Please pray with me. <clears throat> Lord God, you are continually pouring your support upon us. Help us to be a people who follow the path of generosity you paved for us. Multiply the giving of our hearts and hands a hundredfold. Help meet our needs as we also seek to meet the needs of the church. Guide us all in the work of your kingdom, in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. At this time, Adele Duranzo will be sharing her musical gifts with us. Adele, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Today I'm playing for you Just As I Am. Uh, it's an arrangement by Joel Rainey. Um, it's a little different than what you hear, but you'll pick up the, the main tune as we go along. It's a short song, so hope you enjoy. Thank you, Adele, for sharing your musical gifts with us. And again, any of you who would also like to share your musical gifts, please contact us through the church email or the church phone. Lord Jesus, enlighten the eyes of my heart and my mind that I might proclaim your word with integrity, creativity, power, and love. Amen. This morning's scripture comes from the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew 22 verses 15 through 22. May God bless the receiving of the sacred scriptures. Then the Pharisees, they, they went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent disciples to him along with the Herodians 
saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then well, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, says, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And, and they brought, brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is on the coin and, and whose title? And they answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and, and they left him and, and they went away. May God grant us understanding from the sacred scriptures through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When, when some of us were children, we pulled this one on our younger brother or sister who wanted a quarter that we had. Okay, we offered. Let, let's flip for it. Heads, I win. Tails, you lose. Our little sib agrees. Sure, and, and when the heads appear, we proclaim, heads, I win. And of course, if tails comes up, the, the, then, then we tell them, sorry, tails, you lose. At this point, it suddenly dawns on the younger sibling that that this is truly a no-win situation. And in whatever way the coin lands, it's going to land in our pocket, not in theirs. Well, in this week's gospel text, the, the Pharisees think they've concocted the, the perfect no-win question to, to present before Jesus. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Bit of background. In first century Palestine, a political tug-of-war was taking place between, between three Jewish political parties competing for power. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians. The, the strongest of the three were the Pharisees. The, these rabbis and legal experts were highly educated. One of their missions was to bring people's religious and spiritual lives into compliance with the Old Testament law in, in their everyday lives. They discussed, debated, and questioned every nuance of the Torah text, from how far a tailor could carry a needle and thread on the Sabbath to, to the specifics of circumcision and, and ritual food laws. The, the Sadducees, they were the priestly families of Israel, and their power focused upon the temple and, and the sacrificial cult of the Jewish faith. And as the name may imply, the Herodians wanted to keep Herod's family on the Jewish thrones of power. In addition to these three political zealots and, and religious zealots, they abounded. Revolutionaries, that they sprang up regularly. And all three of the major Jewish leadership groups tried to squash any potential threats as quickly as possible. Now, Jesus had amassed a, a following of folk who, who were dissatisfied with the current state of affairs. So, so all three groups saw him and his followers as a definite potential threat. But if they simply arrested him, they risked an uprising. If they left him alone, they suspected that they could soon lose control or risk the disdain and rage of, of their benefactor, Rome. Above all, they, they feared being removed from power and the loss of their wealth, status, and position. So they tried to entangle Jesus in a no-win political trap. They asked him, tell us what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? It, it, it's easy to focus simply on this sentence and, and, and read over the top of the, the one that precedes it. But the preceding sentence is crucial to, to this interaction because in it, we see them setting, setting Jesus up in their very introduction of the question. Teacher, we know that you are sincere. This is the beginning of the posturing. And, and teach the way of God in accordance with, with the, the truth. Truth here is spelled with a capital T. And, and you show deference to no one, for, for you show partiality to no one. The jaws of the trap are being expo exposed here because, because Rome requires showing deference to the emperor. I at this point, Jesus clearly hears the alarm sounding off. Warning, trap, trap ahead, you know. Um, th therefore, t tell us what you think, Jesus. And Jesus, aware of their malice, knows they're testing him. They're baiting him. 
But Jesus outmaneuvers all of them masterfully. Show me the coin used for the tax, he says. They bring out the coin. Now, the, the coin that, that they produce is called the Tyrian half shekel, otherwise known as the Roman denarius. And, and the Romans minted them as a means for the Jews to pay the temple tax. They, they bore the image of the emperor. So the Jews were forced to use an idolatrous medium for their religious practices. The annual temple tax, it paid their dues, so to speak, for the temple membership and religious community membership for the year. They'd use it for, for buying sacrificial animals and for submitting their tithes. So, so if Jesus answers that the taxes with Caesar's image on them should be thwarted, um, he risks being labeled as a dissident, encouraging people to undermine the, the Jewish and secular government. If Jesus answers that, that it is lawful to pay the tax, temple taxes to the emperor, he, he sets himself up as a, a lover of Rome, or, or at least he'd be showing himself willing to allow Rome's worship of, of Caesar to supersede the Jews' worship of, of Yahweh. He, he, he'd seem like a sellout to the idolatrous Roman invaders, and, and he'd lose his following. So Jesus needs to make it clear whose law they need to follow. The law of the Roman government or the scriptural law? The, 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 the Jewish law or the Roman law? The, the religious authorities have Jesus over a barrel. So, so what does he do? He asks them to show him the coin. The head of the coin displays the reigning emperor. On the tail, an inscription reading in the time of Jesus, anyhow, Tiberius Caesar, son of the divine Augustus, Pontifex Maximus. The emperor was the high priest of Rome's pagan religion. There's a bit of humor here because standing on the holiest ground in all of Israel within the temple walls, Jesus' adversaries have quickly produced a coin that bears a graven image, an idol. The second of the Ten Commandments, it expressly warns against the use of idols. So they carry a violation of their law in their pocket. As he often does when he's being asked a hostile question, Jesus responds with his own question. Whose head is on the coin? Whose title? They answer, the emperor's. So Jesus replies, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. At this, Jesus has them. For what belongs to the emperor? A coin with his head on it. What belongs to God? What belongs to God? That's the question, isn't it? What belongs to God? You do. And nothing, anything, any would-be Caesar of the world can do can ever take that away from you. Jesus' contemporaries are not serving God by giving Caesar back the coin that bears his image. For every one of them, for every one of us, bears the, the mark of an image on a whole different scale, it dwarfs any other. For every one of them, every one of us is made, stamped, and sealed with the image of God. Every one of us is created in God's image to be a son or daughter of God. We're already signed, sealed, and committed to God but by our faith, our allegiance, and our relationship with Jesus. Whether it's politics, wealth, threat, or, or demand, no secular thing can ever trump that relationship or take that from us. The only debt we can pay to God is the debt of love. We can give God our very self, for that's the only tribute God desires. God, God, he, God watches over us in our confused and, and vain attempt to, to give ourselves to the, to the idols of, of our world. We keep thinking we, we can gain for ourselves the satisfaction of lasting purpose and security and meaning through this world's idols with their glittering toys and currency and political, political promises and, and plays of power. Eventually, though, all those loyalties leave us empty, spiritually bankrupt. We know deep within, don't we, that we're created for, for so much more. And we also know that, that all things sacred and secular ultimately belong to God. We live in a world in which currency matters, in a country where we choose, or at least we're told we choose, the leaders we follow. 
It's all part of the currency of the realm. It's all part of this world's currency. It's a currency we use for good or ill, to advance or to hinder Christ's intentions for, for this world of ours. But, but this world's currency does not define us. For us, ultimately, our president, the stock market, our country's GNP, and cash are not the ultimate king. As citizens of the realm of Christ, as disciples of Jesus, we navigate with a whole different currency altogether. We navigate this world with the currency of love. On one side of the coin of the realm bears the image of God in heaven. On the other side is the cross of Christ. And the coin itself is minted in the genuine Holy Spirit of God. That's the currency with which we navigate this world as well as the coming one. And, and what does that citizenship look like? Well, let me close with an old story from India. Sundar Pandara was in India and converted to the Christian faith. Well, one day late in the afternoon, he was traveling on foot high in the Himalaya mountains with a Buddhist monk. It was bitterly cold. Darkness was rapidly falling. The monk told Sendar if they didn't hurry and reach the monastery before nightfall, they'd freeze to death. So both men, they picked up their pace, and, and as they walked the, the twisting mountain trail, they came to a place where, where, the, where the path narrowed and cut deep into the wall of a, a steep cliffside. As they walked, a faint cry came up from, from below them. It, it it was a cry for help. Sundar and the monk looked down to, to the bottom of the ravine. And they saw the cry came from a man who had fallen from the trail. His leg was bent at an unnatural angle. He'd broken his leg during the fall. The, the monk warned Sundar, don't stop. Lama Yeshe teaches the Dharma protector brought this man to this place He's been brought here so that he might be purged of the inner and outer obstacles that, that will hinder his path to nirvana. We should not interfere. Besides, the cold is coming. So let's hurry and continue on our journey before the cold kills us. Sundar, he looked at the monk. He said, I've been taught by Lama Jesus that God has brought me here so that I might help my brother. I cannot abandon him here, especially now. The monk listened, then nodded, and set off through the snow, which started to fall heavily, leaving Sundar and the man at the bottom of the ravine behind. Sundar, he, he climbed down to where the man with the broken leg was lying. The climb down was difficult. And once at the bottom, Sundar looked around for some way to carry the man, and he finally ended up pulling his blanket out of his pack, and, and he fashioned a sling. And, and Sundar hoisted the man to his back and began the arduous climb up to the path. The, the climb was grueling, and by the time he reached the trail w w with his broken burden, sweat drenched his body. Sundar continued down the trail. The, the snow became deeper and deeper, and still he, he pressed on. Heavy darkness settled on the mountain and the temperature, it plummeted. Still, Sundar struggled forward with, with the man on his back. The trail was difficult to find and it was hard to stay on it. Sundar was exhausted, overheated, ready to drop. Finally, finally, he saw the lights of the monastery blinking in, in the distance. He, he paused for a moment and then he pushed on. He'd taken only a few steps when he stumbled and, and almost fell, but, but it wasn't from weakness. He had instead tripped over an object that was lying in the path. He, he bent down on one knee and, and he brushed the snow away from what turned out to be the body of the monk, who had frozen to death within sight of the monastery. The words of Lama Jesus then came to him. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will save it. At that moment, Sundar precisely understood what Jesus was saying. He knew firsthand what it meant to lose one's life for another. 
Years later, when Sundar had his own disciples, one asked him, Master Sundar, what is life's most difficult task? And Sundar replied simply, to have no burden to carry. Carrying the burden of God's love for another is the coin of heaven's realm. As we enter into one of the most tumultuous times in our country's history, I encourage you to remember who you are and the nature of the currency we bear. You may adhere to a party, or a politics, or even an economic preference or system of choice. You may choose to play the game of life whatever way you choose. But, but as Christians, never forget whose image is seared into your heart and whose currency must supersede the, the rest. Whose currency is that? God's, who created you and, and now sustains you. Christ Jesus's, who saves your life through the loving burden of his sacrifice. And the Holy Spirit's, who empowers the investment of our currency of love in serving one another. May God bless you in your living and live in you through your loving. Amen. Would you please pause the service at this point and link to song number three, after which please return to the service. Thank you. Please join us online at mwcpc.org next Sunday at 9.30. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you God's peace now and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day, my friends. My love goes out to you all. Thank you.